Hello everyone, my name is Chi Tao. I'm so glad to share with you some violin techniques. This series is called The Essential Techniques for Orchestra Side Reading. Through different videos with my demonstration, I hope you will get all the essential techniques that you need when you are sight reading in the orchestra. The first episode is about how to choose the right fingerings. I will cover the general points, extension, shifting on minor seconds, the Hattes method, and other suggestions. Having good fingerings will help you play any passages more easily. It involves less risk of shifting and creates better security of intonation. First of all, you should feel comfortable with the position that you're playing with. Unlike solo playing, which the virtuosity is a concern, for orchestra playing, you don't need to be that virtuosic. You don't need to play everything on the same string, unless the composer particularly marks it. So find the easiest and the most comfortable position to play with. The first method that I want to share with you is extension. You can extend any finger to reach a higher position or a lower position without shifting. The most common ones are the pinky and the index finger. Extension works so great that no one can hear the shifting sound. All of a sudden, you are already on a different position magically. Here are two examples of host's planet. Look at the fourth line measure three. Instead of shifting to the second position, I extend the index finger to play the C sharp. My whole hand is still on the third position. Here is another example. Look at the second line measure 4. Instead of shifting to the 6th position to reach the high B flat, I stay on the 5th position and extend my pinky to reach the B flat without shifting. Please explore the extension method in your own music. The second method that I want to share with you is shifting on any minor seconds, which is in half step. It can be applied to both ascending and descending. The benefits of shifting on minor seconds is to make the shift unnoticeable because the interval is so small that you can hardly hear the shift. Here is an example of Beethoven's Fourth Symphony. Look at the second line of letter G, second measure. I shift from B natural to C, which is a minor second. The next measure, I reach the B natural with the extension, not shift. The next measure, Again, I shift from C sharp to D, which is a minor second. The next measure, I reach the D flat with extension, not shift. The next measure, this is another minor second, D sharp to E. The third method that I want to share with you is called reste. It is a French word. It means stay. You may have already seen it on your music. I think we can use it greatly in orchestra side reading. It makes things much easier. Let me show you two examples. This is the bars from Tchaikovsky's Swan Lake Suite. Look at letter four. This whole section, if you don't use the Hittes method, then you will slide around, making the intonation unstable and insecure. It also creates unnecessary portamento, sliding sound. Here is a bad example. Can you 
you imagine if the whole section plays like this? So how to make it better? If you use the Hattie's method, I start the F sharp on the fifth position and stay there. See, it's much clean and in tune. In this passage of Jubit, you are probably scared because there are so many notes and it looks so fast. How can I play it in tune and in time? Again, if I use the Hitte's method, everything becomes so easy now. I start the F sharp on the G string. There are a few other suggestions about how to find the right fingerings. The first one is that you should try to shift on the beat. It creates great clarity and it also helps you stay with the beat. Here is an example of this late prelude. There are so many high notes flying around. Don't be scared. Look at measure one. Analyze if you can play all the notes on one position. The answer is yes. Then do the same thing for measure 2, 3, 4. Measure 5 is interesting. You have a repeated note G. If you use the method, which is shift on the beat, then the problem is solved. I start the first note on the third position. Then shift to the sixth position. Please make sure both G sounds the same. This is a part that you need to practice. The same thing applies to measure 9 and 10. When I shift from the first position to the fourth position through the repeated note E. Another suggestion for you is try not shift right after a short note, like a 16 note. It creates unnecessary portamento, means sliding sound. Here is an example of Beethoven's fourth symphony. Look at the third line, measure four. If I shift after the 16 note A, it will sound like this. There's a sliding sound. However, if I shift after the tie, It's much clean. I use the pinky for the quarter note D, then shift to the D with my index finger. Here is a good example of this passage. Now, Let's move to another suggestion. Sometimes you can take good advantage of open strings to make the shift. It gives you extra time. You can also use the finger octave. Normally we play the octave using either one and four or open string and three. Finger octave means that you use one and three or two and four to play the octave. Here is an example of Dvorak's number 6 symphony. I use a lot of techniques in this short passage. Look at the fourth line, measure 2 and 3. I shift on the beat. Then I use open E to reach the high E. Then I use the finger octave to reach the high B and low B. Then I extend my index finger to reach the D-sharp. Let me play for the whole passage. Dynamics is a big thing that we should concern in orchestra playing. Sometimes you might need to sacrifice the easy positions 
and do everything for the sake of dynamics. I give you an example. Here is the Mercury of host planet. Look at the beginning. The dynamic marking is piano. Measure eight and nine. It is still piano. If you play these two measures on the first position, which is easy, then the B natural and the E natural will stick out because they are on different string. It totally ruins the dynamic. It sounds so abrupt. Here is a better way to play this soft passage. I start on the second position, and using the extension method, I extend the B natural and the E natural with my pinky without shifting, like this. Now I can play it with the soft dynamic. The last thing that I want to share with you today is a common method which can be applied to all your sight reading assignment. In a long passage of high notes, how you decide when you are shifting, create a good plan to get to the top note and go down to the low note. Here is an example of Dvorak's number nine symphony. Look at letter one. How you decide which finger you should play the first note E? Well, it looks like G is the highest note for the next three measures, so the second finger is good for the E. <laughs> Measure three, I use the Hetes method to stay on the same position by playing the B on the A string. Measure five and six, I find the highest note, which is the B. If you use the pinky to play the B, then you should shift the index finger on the F sharp. After I play the B with the pinky, I extend my third finger down to reach the G. and extend my index finger down to reach the D-sharp. So everything is unnoticeable when I stick all the way down to the D-sharp. And then I will stay on that position to make the intonation more stable and secure. That means from measure 8 to 10, my fingering is 1, 2, 3, 4 for the D-sharp E F sharp and G. It looks like a big jump for the last three notes of measure 10. How do I decide the fingerings then? I look ahead. The next few measures starting letter 2 seem that I can play all the notes on the third position without shifting around. So I look backwards and decide that I will use the third finger to shift to the F sharp, and then I stay on the third position for the rest of the passage. Okay, let me play for you the whole thing. Conclusion, I will always look ahead of the music and find the highest note and the lowest note into my consideration to decide when I shift. <laughs>